Ahoy! Welcome back to another episode of Ocean State Aquatics TV. If you have been keeping up with our channel for a long time, you would know that I did a how-to on all of the API tests that we sell on how to perform them when you're doing a water test yourself. So I thought I would circle back to that series and start doing a salifer test series. So today we are starting off strong with the magnesium test kit. Now, if you have a reef tank, you would know that API does not sell a magnesium test kit. So if you were using all the API test kits before, you know that you would need to purchase a different brand if you wanted to do a magnesium test. So that's why I figured I would start with this one. So like when purchasing any test kit, you wanna make sure that you have absolutely everything that it comes with in the kit before you get started. So we've got our three reagents. We've got two liquid and one powder. Uh, we got a little plastic cylinder. We've got two different types of syringes and we've got a little scoop. Uh, and we also have a water sample from one of the saltwater tanks in the store. So before I actually begin, I would like to note that this is actually the old magnesium test. They actually sell an updated version now that doesn't have the powder in it. And the new test is actually a lot easier, but these tests that we have in store that we had already opened before they updated, they actually don't expire until next year. So we can actually keep using these for a while, which is why I'm doing this video now. And once it comes to the expiration date, I'm going to do an updated video with the new test and how to do that one. So if you wanna figure out how to do the new one, stay tuned. So starting off, I'm going to put gloves on. I have really sensitive skin when it comes to chemicals, so I wear gloves when I do any sort of chemical testing for any of my water and any of the water tests that I do. So the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna take your two milliliter syringe and you're going to add two milliliters of the water that you are testing into the little test vial. So the next step you're gonna do is you're gonna be adding all the reagents. Now they are numbered one, two, and three. So you're just gonna basically go through and start with number one. So this you are going to add five drops of. When you're adding any sort of drops into any sort of water that you're testing, you wanna make sure you hold the bottle completely upside down so the drops are uniform in size. All right, so the next step you're gonna do is you're going to add one of these little scoops of the powder into the test vial and you're gonna swirl it for 10 seconds. Now, if you have the updated version of the test, this is where the kit is a little bit different. It does not actually have this powder step in the kit. So once you swirl it for 10 seconds, you're gonna see it's gonna turn this nice pink color. So the next part, you are going to take your syringe and you are going to draw up some of the third reagents liquid. When you first purchase a kit, the tip is going to come separate from the syringe. So you just wanna make sure you firmly place it on. And this part is really important because you wanna make sure that your syringe tip is fully submerged in the reagent so you do not accidentally draw any air bubbles in. When you are drawing the reagent in, there is going to be a little gap of air between the liquid and between the black little plunger in the syringe that is completely normal and you're going to read how much reagent is actually in the vial based on the bottom most part of the black plunger and not on the line of the liquid. So you're going to draw up one milliliter of liquid, which is going to be the utmost line on this syringe. So as you can see here, the lower most part of the black plunger is at the one milliliter line, but the liquid of the reagent is a lot lower. That is completely normal. And this is what you want your syringe to look like. So the next part is going to be the most intensive part. And that is you're going to add the reagent in drop by drop and swirl between the drop until the solution changes from a pink to almost kind of a grayish blue color. Whatever color comes up first, that is where you're going to stop. But it does take a while. It does take a lot of this reagent to get to that point. So you can add in about 80% of the reagent at once. I always find that I'm a little bit too trigger happy when I'm plunging the reagent into the solution. So I kind of always err on the side of caution because I always end up messing up. So I'm gonna start out by adding uh, a big bulk of this reagent into the solution so far, and then you just swirl. So after that, I'm going to add about one drop at a time swirling between. Now, when I was first learning how to do this test, I always felt really, really silly and stupid during this part. But remember learning a new skill is always gonna feel a little bit awkward and uh, counting your drops and swirling at the same time is gonna feel a little awkward for anyone on their first time. So on the instruction manual that comes with your kit, if you open this up all the way, there is a chart on the inside and whatever amount of reagent you have left in the syringe is going to correspond to a number on this chart and that is how you get your magnesium level. And there we go. That was the last drop that we needed. So you can see it turned from that bright pink to kind of this grayish blue color. So as you can read from the top of the plunger, this is reading at about 0.18, uh, which if you take it to the chart, that reads to be about 1230 for your magnesium. So this is what you're gonna be left with at the end of the test. You're gonna have your waste from your titration and you're going to have the waste reagent inside of your syringe. I would not recommend putting this back into the reagent bottle. You can get some contamination from inside of the syringe. So just to keep this pure, you're just gonna wanna not add any of that reagent back into the bottle. 
So when you are cleaning up after doing this test, you wanna make sure you dispose of these chemicals in a proper way that complies with all local laws and enforcements. So that is pretty much it for testing your magnesium using a one of the older Salifer magnesium test kits. Hopefully this helps you guys out if you're having magnesium issues in any of your reef tanks at home, or if you just wanna figure out where your magnesium stands, or if you're just getting started. Um, so like always, thank you guys so much for watching and keep on reefing.